Hi, my name is Andrew Patterson. Uh, I'm a Scottish artist and organizer who has been based in Helsinki, Finland for the last seven years. And uh, I have background in fine arts and computer science. Uh, and when I lived in Scotland and North England, uh, I was very much interested in community arts. But since I moved to Finland, uh, I've been very much involved with what has been called the new media art scene and in particular with a, a couple of organizations, one in Helsinki called Pixelic and another one in, in Latvia, uh, in Riga, called Riksi. And what you're asking me to, to share here is, is one, one outcome of an of a, of a art and culture project that I've been involved with. Uh, the project was called the Herbologies Foraging Networks and uh, it's, it had a few starting points, this, this project. I was involved in initiating a, a network of people who are interested in, in plants and wild plants and wild food and uh, how it might relate to the practices and behaviours that people have in gathering them but also how you share information and knowledge about this, in particular in the context of online networks. It was actually in a, a Rixi, uh, Rixi Centre for New Media Art and Culture uh, who had organized a sort of network meeting, uh, a sort of sharing of practices meeting around renewable energy and renewable technologies. And at this, at this meeting, myself and another Finnish uh, curator sat down together with Signe and we talked about this sort of overlap of interests. And this other person I mentioned, Ulla Taipala, she, she is a curator for BioArts. And, uh, she lived in Spain, but she had, of course, grown up in, in Finland, and she'd been interested also to engage somehow with this topic, and uh, particularly the science connotations of it. So the three of us came up with a plan together, and we uh, submitted, in the end, an application to the, uh, a funding body called Kulta Contact Nord, which is a sort of Nordic cultural production funding. And uh, we made an application which included uh, this, the Latvian organization Serde, which was Signe's organization, and they had focused a lot on traditional knowledge and doing ethnographic or folkloric work through cultural practice to document what people do in the countryside. And then uh, from, from my position related to Pixelic Festival in Helsinki, we had the context to present some of the first art science type themes around plants uh, in our project. and. Uh, we sort of made a, a program where we split some activity to Helsinki and some activity to, to Latvia. And we invited in also Kultavatar, which is an artist group from uh, an island called Uland on the south east coast of Sweden. And they had a, a, a strong uh, art farming connection. Uh, so they were our, our, our main Nordic partner, but we, we also had a few other contacts from, from Belgium and from Poland and from Lithuania. So in the end, this Nordic cultural funding, which is really focusing on exchange of knowledge and experience and practice, uh, became the sort of basis for this network that this Forbiology's Foraging Network program was about. When we were considering about putting the information online, we had to think about uh, how, how do we share this information. And certainly for, for myself and a few others, we're inspired by the idea of information commons and about open source in particular. And the, the question is how how does this relate to traditional knowledge and in some cases indigenous knowledge and that which has been learned and, and uh, uh, knowledge which has been gained through trial and error over a long period of time living in a particular habitat and among particular species. Like how, this, like how do you share this online and, and what rights do you have to share this online? And for, for me, as a as a as let's say a open information advocate, it was a difficult question because you knew that the the heritage archivists they, they didn't process things so fast. If they did this ethnographic interviews, they would uh, it would maybe take half a year or more, if not years, for this information to be released after it been considered and interpreted and uh, etc. And what we were doing was publishing it. Through, very fast in their terms, like in the space of a couple of months. 
and the type of license that you might put to this, it's not really public domain. It's not personal proprietary knowledge. Uh, it has been learned through many different means. So this, how you how you share information and the type of uh, open knowledge practices that you should develop is a big question. In the end, we we chose a non comment uh, Creative Commons license, which was non commercial and share alike, but it still didn't seem exactly appropriate. And then uh, <coughs> we used different cultural events and different festivals to share what we had learned and the, the platform that we made to share the information and uh, we made presentations for example in a harvest festival and we took advantage of social media uh, websites to help spread about what we were doing and, and so we, we used this network culture of communication but it's not sure exactly how it fits like more where where it's a good thing where it meets together because what what we had learned was something really site-specific, very particular to a place and culture. And when we translate it and when we publish it, we take it out of that situation, we take it out of that uh, history and, and context where it's been gathered and make it accessible to to people who, who maybe don't have any understanding of this, who might misinterpret it or maybe even abuse that information. Since we were involved with Pixelake Festival at the beginning, which is a festival of electronic arts and new media culture and has promoted open source from its early days uh, and because of the let's say the, the communications and networks that surround these types of festivals our, our work and our very local work in, in these Latvian towns became uh, attractive to present in other new media festivals so for example later in the year we were invited to, to uh, ICEA which took place in, in Rur, this international symposium for electronic arts. And uh, this project and the types of things we've been doing in it was presented in a, a sort of a curated section which was about looking for new routes to some future better times or place. And so this traditional uh, knowledge is seen as a somehow a, a savior for the future and this uh, future rhetoric and maybe the crisis of of how things are now is is seen uh, to look back at traditional values and maybe also to 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 see where you can learn from getting involved in very situated work or very particular places and particular cultures uh, being able to support yourself from the food that you can find nearby is something which has become a a new media culture the way that you communicate it and the way that you uh, inspire people has become part of a new media culture and uh, one that we have to think about a bit more and like we're like an, for what <coughs> is, is it appropriate still to keep presenting it uh, for cultural workers and for curators and for uh, for people who are interested in technology because at the first it doesn't seem so obvious uh, it seems rather far away, but if if I use the example of this ICEA, uh, what we what we made in this in this event was a workshop. And my collaborator Signe and her husband Ujus they set up their vodka making equipment. Well, actually, the technique that they just demonstrated was one which is learned from an old lady in a countryside kitchen involved very simple technology it involved like three three bowls a heater as you would normally heat up things in a stove and a pack of ice some old jam or berry juice and this technique was one which was sort of underground it was one that you could make alcoholic spirit but no one would know that you had the technology to do so because all of these equipments were on your shelf in your kitchen. <coughs> so this very traditional and very un, let's say, un, or low-tech, better to say, low-tech uh, approach to to processing materials, in this case uh, berry juice or fruit juice. What we did is we had a room full of artists, designers, technologists, activists, 
who were all interested in new media culture or electronic arts. And we know that they had cameras, they had skills at documenting processes, uh, they come from many different places and different languages, or have different languages. And so we invited them to document the process and to, I mean, the, the work that, that Serda had been doing had been mostly in Latvian in the past. And it was only, I suppose, in our herbologist collaboration that we started to try, that they started to translate things. <coughs> and so we invited this room full of artists and technologists with their media gadgets and devices to help us make new documentations of a very traditional process. So some, some took the photos, some did video, some did illustration, uh, some took notes in German, some took notes in Romanian, some took notes in Mandarin, Cantonese. So like the, the resource is that the international network culture has allowed us to make very, very, uh, several different versions of how and interpretations of how you make a very traditional thing, in this case alcoholic spirit. The alcoholic spirit was good for, let's say, making tinctures and other her herbal uh, medicines. Uh, but the way that, that was shown to them was one which came from a very particular place, a uh, countryside kitchen in Latvian countryside. And <coughs> maybe this is where this traditional culture meets the very new, like of having the ability uh, to record and to document, to, to share and upload materials that other people could then use because they've been given the license to do so. We made a, a little uh, collection of materials on, on an online platform called Bookie. And Bookie allows you to make booklets on the, in on the internet, on the web browser. You can edit and adjust pages, you can put in pictures. Uh, you can adjust content, many different people doing so, and then you can click export, and it makes PDF booklet very quickly. And we made this, the, the Latvian word for, for this alcoholic spirit, uh, one of them is called kanja. Uh, so out of this exercise in ICEA, we developed this concept maybe, called kanja international. So a very particular thing turned into a very international network thing. So that we have maybe five, six different translated language versions with photos from different people uh, put together as a commons material that other people can then maybe rework and reuse and make another version of this. And for me this is where the, the network can be useful. <coughs>